Section 11CA, she all love that, relates to the restraint of trade payments. Now, restraint of trade payment is, for example, let's say you and I both live in a small town and we are both accountants and I, because I'm older than you, have a little business there. Now you come into town and you want to also have an accounting business and I don't think it's, it's, there's enough space for both of us. So I come to you and I say, listen, here is a million rands and then I want you to, for a period of five years at least, you can't trade in this town. That's a restraint of trade. Now, for the person receiving it, let's quickly just talk about, this is just general theory. So, this person pays a million rands restraint of trade can be companies also but for now this is I want you to focus this on the principle which I'm explaining here restraint of trade to this person now this person over here receiving it will that million rands be capital nature or will it be gross income now if you think to gross income and you'll remember when we did capital nature is excluded from if something's capital nature is not gross income and when we look at the well, things like the Fisser case, now the Fisser case, again, guys, court case names aren't as important, but just so that you can go and look it up if you are not familiar with what I'm talking about, the tree versus fruit situation. So they say, if you receive something for the tree, that's capital, and if you receive something for the fruit, that's revenue in nature. So that a tree that produces fruit, the idea is if you sell the the fruit that is gross income if you sell the tree the thing that produces the fruit that is capital now if you receive a restraint of trade what you're receiving is money that stops this tree from producing fruit so you've got the tree store you've got the business but you can't have the fruit so you're receiving it for the tree right you're receiving it for your business so that is capital in nature restraint of trade is capital in nature now if you go and look at the gross income definition Paragraph C, A, and C, B of the gross income definition have special inclusions that says if a personal service provider or a labor broker receives a restraint of trade, it will be included in their gross income. Or if a natural person, and this is the more, more common one, if a natural person receives it in respect of employment. Now that employment, so it means that in my example that I used here, where I say, well, you come into the town and I give you and you want to have your own business and I give you this million rands that you can't trade there, that would not be included in your gross income. It would still be capital. Why? Because it doesn't have anything to do with employment. But let's say I am the boss, you work for me, so you are employed by me, and now you say to me, listen, I'm going to leave and I'm going to do my own business, so you want to leave and do your own business. So now, uh, or I say to you, or you want to go and work for someone else, and I give you money, so it's linked to your employment, then it will be in your gross income. And that is most of the time the case that we see with natural persons. Right, and it can be your past employment, current or future, just anything to do with employment. So, very important, you need to know who gets taxed on it. Now, we are looking at the deduction side, so we're looking at this person who is paying it. What can they claim as a deduction? Because think now about it, they're actually making a capital payment as well. So section 11CA says, you are allowed an allowance in respect of any amount actually incurred by such person in the course of carrying on his trade, in respect of any restraint of trade, on any other person who is a natural person, a labor broker, a personal service provider, to the extent that such an amount constitutes or will constitute income of the person to whom it is paid. So very important there. Remember, who will be taxed on it? Personal service providers and labor brokers. That's why we have a personal service provider and a labor broker there. And natural persons, but only for employment. That's why they mention natural persons there, but they say still to the extent that it will be income. So you have to know if it will be income. So first up, you can only claim the person paying it can only claim this deduction if it will be included in the income of the person who is receiving it. That's an important point. Then, provided that this amount that will be allowed as a deduction shall not exceed the lesser of so much of the amount so incurred as is equal to such an amount divided by the number of years or part thereof, then which the restraint of trade shall apply, 
or one third of the amount. So what they're saying is, this is the deduction over here summarized. It is the lesser of the restraint of trade divided by the actual years of the restraint or restraint of trade divided by three years. So if I say to you, here's a million rands and you can't practice here for four years, we'll say it is a million divided by four, 250,000 or a million divided by three, 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 like that. Which was the lesser? Sorry, the 250,000. So that is our uh, restraint of trade. Please also note, no apportionment. What does no apportionment mean? It means that if I pay them halfway through the year, remember we do this thing where we say it's from 6 over 12, that's apportionment. You don't do that. So even if it's on the last day of the tax year, you just do this calculation.